Alrighty, welcome. Thanks for coming out, everyone. My name is Kin Lane. I'm the Chief Evangelist with Postman. So my role at Postman is to light the fire under uh, your imagination about what's possible. Uh, it's my job. Uh, I get paid full time to just uh, give people ideas, think about what's possible, learn about APIs, help people learn about APIs. And so that's what I'm here to, to help you with tonight as part of the, the hackathon. So to help set the stage for uh, you know what's possible tonight or this whole weekend, what you can build with, is over the last 20 years, there's been this, this real explosion of APIs. So everything that we know about our online worlds around us have APIs behind them, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, all of these platforms have APIs. Zoom has APIs. So there's been this explosion of APIs and all of this, while all of this is going on, there's been three big shifts. Everything's gone to our mobile phones. So everything's now available on our, our mobile devices and all those legacy big apps that, that, that have run our world for the last 30, 40 years are being broken down into little, little Lego parts and pieces. And then all of that's being moved to the cloud. And so APIs is driving all of this. And here at Postman, this is what we do, and we keep an eye on it. And this is what we're seeing over the last five years is this explosion in growth of what we see as API collections. And I'll go more into uh, about what an API collection is here shortly, but it's a representation of a single API that you can use. So there are Facebook Postman collections, there are Twitter Postman collections, and I'll show you a few of those uh, that we've built. But what I want to, one thing that I want to get across here is Postman is not just for uh, making calls to APIs and, and putting APIs to use. It's also, you can build APIs with it. And so I'll, I'm going to show you a little bit tonight about how you can use Postman to make calls to APIs as part of your project. And then when you're building your project or your, your application, you can actually deploy APIs using Postman as well when you need specific data that you can't find through an existing API. So when all of this happened about, um, I guess it was like mid-March now, uh, we all at Postman kind of got the same motivation behind what brought everyone together tonight is we started working on a bunch of resources, API resources that would help people combat the, uh, the pandemic in some way, in their own way, not necessarily directly with science, but any possible application uh, that would make our life a little bit better, a little bit easier in these times is, is what we're looking to do. So you can find a list of these resources that we've pulled together and that I'm going to walk through here. It's available at covid-19-apis.postman.com. I'll be tweeting this link out. So um, if you can't find it, it's pretty easy to find. Google Postman COVID-19 and you should find it. But let's, uh, let's jump out of the slide deck because at Postman, I'm not too big, try to not spend too much time in the slide deck and actually want to go onto the web. And more importantly, I want to be able to go into the Postman application. So this is a Postman desktop application that you can download for free um, on Mac or, or Windows, and you can run and uh, be able to make API calls to APIs. But real quick, I want to show you our resources page and what, uh, what we put together. So this is our COVID-19 resource center, and you'll see a list when you land here, a list of different APIs, existing new APIs that popped up to, uh, to try to make sense of COVID-19. Uh, there's a handful of them here, and you can see the documentation for each one by clicking on the link. But then there's this run in Postman button for each of them. And this is will take a Postman collection for a specific API and bring it down to your desktop and put it in your application so you can use it. And it helps you get started with that API uh, a lot faster than if you just were Googling and looking for that API. So I'm going to show you real quick how you can do that with one of these. So I'm going to click on uh, Run in Postman here. And it, I've got Postman for Mac. If you're Windows, it'll open up for you in Windows. And I'm going to uh, open it up in my Postman. So now if you look over here on the left-hand side, in my Postman app, I've got a list of API calls that I can make. So real quick, just pause for a second. Think of Postman as like a browser 
combined with a, 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 a spreadsheet. So you can crunch, you can pull data from APIs, you can crunch it and work with it, but it works kind of like your browser. You have tabs up here, and I'm gonna open up what's the state's current API request. And it just basically opens up a tab like in my browser with an address bar, like in my browser, but I can make a call to this. I can hit send and rather than seeing HTML, I see JSON and Postman lets you see all the details of that. You can save that JSON. Uh, there's ways you can visualize this JSON. We have a visualizer. Um, and so you can make, you can explore this data really fast within Postman and then you can change uh, different parameters, you can make different requests, and it's a quick way to just get up and going with APIs. So as part of the COVID-19 uh, Postman Resource Center, we've published a whole bunch of these, and we've got a whole bunch more we're, we're working to create and, and get on this listing. But there's quite a few here. You're going to have to look through it and see what's most relevant for you. Um, there's a lot that you can, you can find here that are existing APIs, but I've also done a couple unique ones that help you understand what's possible with Postman. If you look down here, there's one called CDC cases for uh, and deaths. And I call this a scrape PI, and I'm going to show you why. So if I load that collection up, I've got a second collection now here with one request in it. And this actually is just a web URL for the CDC. If I look at it in the browser, It's just the CDC web page for where they update the cases. And we've got the number right here of cases and deaths. So this Postman collection has a little script embedded in it. When it pulls this HTML, we'll go ahead and run that and show it. Here's the HTML. Doesn't make a lot of sense. But what this script does is it, it looks for those two numbers on the page. And you'll have to play with this and reverse engineer it to make it work for whatever data you want to scrape. But then it visualizes that as JSON right here. So it's, it grabs the cases and it grabs the death, death, excuse me. And this is a great way to create data when you need it from a web page. So Postman Collections can get you data from an existing API and it can get you data from uh, a, a Postman, from a, an existing website if you need it. And there's other examples of that if you go to our resource center, we've got, you can do that from Google Sheets, you can scrape from websites, and there's more advanced ways if you need it from databases, but I'm happy to help, help you with those more advanced uses. So that really shows what's possible when it comes to the resources we built with the COVID-19 uh, resource page. But there's also, if you go to the Postman network, so if you just Google Postman network, there's also a whole network of other APIs out there. So you've got Twitter, Facebook, you've got a bunch of different APIs if you need data. And you can pull stuff from Reddit, Twitter. There's a lot of different use cases uh, for you to get the data you need for your applications. But also I don't want to neglect, I want to be able to point out that you can make an API real quick as well. So what I'm going to do here is go back into Postman. So if you, if you need to make your own API for a particular reason, I'm gonna click plus, create a blank empty browser window or tab. I'm gonna enter, um, I'm gonna do one on restaurants. So I'm gonna call this restaurants and I'm gonna do it for the city of Oakland because I wanna be able to find, I live in Oakland and I wanna be able to find restaurants that, that are still serving and open and what they're serving. So I'm gonna make my own API. But I have this little snippet of JSON here of four restaurants that I want to return with this API. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to go ahead and save my request because you got to save it. I'm going to call this restaurants, excuse me. And I got to spell restaurants correctly. And then I'm going to create a new collection. I'm going to call this one restaurants. And I'm going to save it. And then once I've saved this, I can add a new example to this uh, API request that I'm making. And I'm gonna paste my JSON in here. It's got the same uh, URL that I wanted. Now, because I'm a uh, API guy, I'm, I'm pretty picky about, I want a 200 response code and I apologize. I just can't publish an API call if it's not, not perfect. 
Um, and then it's got to be JSON. Um, it's got to have a content type of JSON because um, this is how the web works. We're not returning HTML. And again, I apologize. I'm such a uh, API nerd. Um, but now we've got this API request here. We can hit save. I'm going to close this example. And then over here on my collection that I've created, I can choose to mock it. I'm going to mock this um, this request. And I'm going to call it my restaurants mock. This is a mock API. What I'm going to do is bring this API to life, like it's a real live API, but it's it's really just a mock. It's not meant for production, but it's perfect for hackathons and getting things done when, uh, when you need to build an application. So um, I can make it private if I need to, or you can just leave it public and it's a little easier to access and you can just share uh, the URL of your private, your, your little API with people. And then here's the URL. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then all we do is if we grab this uh, path over here, paste it on there and hit send, we get our, our example back at, this is our API. So if we want to share this API with someone, you can just give it to someone and they can load it in Postman. They can load it in their browser. It's just a URL uh, to a mock server. So now you've got some data and you can update that data as you need um, and you can do what you need with it. Um, you can also uh, publish documentation from this collection. If you want to real quick publish some docs to help uh, share your new mock API. Um, there's a lot you can do to it, but really if you just hit publish down here at the bottom, click on the URL, um, you get your docs, you get your API documentation and for your restaurants. And so here's that run in Postman button that I showed you. Now your API has docs, has a little run in Postman button for other people. And you can build out as many of those APIs as you need. So that's the conclusion of my demo. There's a lot more, um, but I just don't have time to go through it all. Uh, let's go back to our slide deck here. But if you're needing help, I recommend that you can go to community.postman.com. There's plenty uh, what you can uh, put to work there. You can go to the Postman network, as I said, explore.postman.com. And then Postman Labs, if you have information that you want there um, to give feedback on the app, you can, uh, you can see it. And once again, my Twitter handle is Kin Lane. It's also API Evangelist. I'm easy to find on Twitter. My name, name's pretty unique. And um, I'm here all weekend to help. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to stay up later tonight. I'm here throughout the weekend as you're building stuff. Just let me know. And you can also hit us at postman.com and get Postman, and we can help you out there. And thanks for everybody. I look forward to seeing what you're all building. I appreciate it.